Welcome to Hartwick Pines State Park. This is Tigger's first state park. Are you having fun, kitty? Yeah, meow, meow. At 9,600 acres, Hartwick Pines State Park is the fifth largest state park in the state of Michigan, and it is the second largest in the Lower Peninsula. It was created in the 1920s uh, by land donated by Karen Hartwick in memory of her late husband, Edward. Um, she purchased 8,000 acres of this land from her father, who actually was part of a local lumber business. And when they were done logging it, she purchased that acreage and donated it to the state of Michigan, specifically be to be turned into a park. In the 1930s, the CCC came in and they helped build a couple of the buildings in the logging museum. Again, that was something that Karen had requested be part of the state park that she donated, uh, as well as the building behind us, which was the original visitor center. It's interesting, we're here on Memorial Day weekend and we got to go into this memorial building and the lady inside said it was only the second day that it had been open in 24 years. Mm -hmm. It was the original visitor center, they shut it down, built a new one, haven't used the building for anything but storage since then. Now it's open, they're trying to get everything up and running with electricity again and they're gonna put it to use for something, which is great because it's really a shame that it's been sitting empty all these years with nobody really taking advantage of it. It is a really cool building and we think it could be used for a lot of things. There is a little chapel here in the park and so it'd be kind of cool that you could, you can already use the chapel for weddings. So it would be really neat if you could have your wedding and then come over here for your reception or even just interpretive programs, stuff for school kids. I mean, there is definitely a lot that you could use this building for. So I'm glad to see it open again. One of the main components at Hartwick Pine State Parks is the logging museum. They've got a number of different buildings and tools that represent the logging industry back in you know the 1800s here in Michigan. Logging was a huge part of Michigan's history and unfortunately a quite detrimental one uh, because they were they cut down much of the old growth forest. These trees you know we're talking five to eight feet around, a hundred and some feet tall, and just gorgeous pines and other hardwoods um, but you know they pretty much wiped out most of the forest in Michigan for everything from housing to lumber or to furniture and pretty much anything that, um, you know, lumber is used for. Yeah, a lot of the country was built on Michigan, right? I mean, with Michigan wood and, and the pines that were here and you said five to eight feet, there's, there's some cases they said they were 12 feet around. I mean, these trees were huge. And besides the logging museum here, the other thing that's cool is they have an old growth trail where there are trees that were preserved and, you know, they, they're really pretty. They're really interesting to see them. Um, one thing, if you come to Michigan and you see our forest, a lot of times you'll notice that when they uh, did forest management and replanted trees, they did jack pines and things like that that grew quickly, but they're all lined up like little soldiers. And what's neat about an old growth forest and the way to really tell one is the trees are everywhere, right? They're just sort of haphazardly planted what because- you think of as a forest. <laughs> they weren't planted, right? They just, they grew themselves and, and seeded themselves. So that's kind of neat to see that and to see some trees that are even though they're large and impressive in the old growth forest that's still here, nothing in comparison to what was here when people first arrived in Michigan. You can see by the placard, it says the monarch has fallen. Monarch is a nickname. So it's an Eastern white pine. We call it a monarch because monarch means king. This tree was the king of the forest here at uh, Hartwood Pine State Park for many years. What happened to it in 1993 in a windstorm most of the top was blown off and there was still some green up there. So for about another four years, and then they declared it dead finally when they couldn't see any more green. So at its peak, this tree got to be about 155 to maybe 160 feet tall. And it's about four feet in diameter. Some of the biggest white pines in the state of Michigan back in 1840 when they started logging or anywhere from six to eight feet in diameter and maybe as much as 220 feet tall. So this was, it's not like this was the biggest tree ever. Just so, it, you know, it just happens to be the biggest white pine or was uh, for many, many years here. Now they measured this tree when it died to see how old it was. And they estimated this tree to be about 325 years old. 
which again means that this tree was living here in the forest before we were even a country, before our first president and all that. This is what most of Michigan looked like in 1840, except for the trees were even bigger. So what he meant by the trees even bigger, this tree that got hit by lightning is a white pine. It's probably about three feet in diameter. But again, like I said earlier, they used to be six to eight feet in diameter. In fact, just to kind of blow your mind, if you're good with math, I think, I think if I remember correctly, that 53% of the state of Michigan is covered with forest. So over a little over half of Michigan is covered with forest. And, but they, but some people have estimated back in 1840, there was 6,000 times more board feet of lumber in the state of Michigan than there is today. Even with the old growth forest here, there are about 49 acres of old growth forest. Um, originally there was 85 acres, but a big storm uh, quite a number of years ago wiped out most of that. So it was, it was not a man-made disaster in that case. It was, you know, mother nature. But unfortunately, I mean, we're left with very, very few pockets of that original old growth in Michigan anywhere, both upper and lower peninsulas. One of the neat things about the equipment that they have on display here is you get an idea of how big those trees were that they were dealing with. Because when you look at the size of the wheels and the carts and the sleds, the things they had to use to move the trees once they were cut, uh, it was incredible. And they have both summer and wintertime equipment because they worked year round. It was not an easy life no, uh, being in a no. lumber camp. There was a lot of hard work and very dangerous because remember they were cutting giant trees down by hand. So they had to deal with a lot of danger as they were doing this as well. You get to see a lot of that here at the museum. And during the summertime uh, on the weekends, you can find some folks sort of reenacting and doing some demonstrations about what life was like in camp. Uh, we got to see a couple of folks uh, cooking today. So biscuits and pancakes or flapjacks as they were calling them. Um, and one of the things interesting we learned was they didn't have a lot of refrigeration. Dairy was not really an option. So everything that the lumberjacks would have cooked with uh, you know, back in the times they were here, was all based off of sourdough. That's something that we don't really cook with much these days because we do have refrigeration. So just some history that we learned today. And they do those demonstrations mostly on the weekends? I, I believe I that's what they said on the, on the weekends. Makes sense, that's when most people are here visiting. Um, but if you do, you know, plan to spend some time here, just not only checking out the trail, but the museum part itself. Uh, there's a, a recreation bunkhouse area where you've got uh, the camp store, a kitchen, the bunk beds. Basically, you can kind of see what life was like here. They've got the living quarters where the men ate, slept, get, you know, did everything pretty much in you know, one or two buildings. It was you know, definitely not the most pristine conditions. Uh, one thing I found was Sundays were reserved for cleaning and rest days. And as a general rule, the men were required to wash their clothes at least once every two weeks. Uh, so I have to imagine that the cramped quarters got kind of stinky after a while. Kind of some of the original campers. I wash my clothes every two weeks, whether they need it or not. <laughs> but yeah, it's really neat when they, and they're dressed in period clothes when they do the demonstrations here with the cooking demonstrations. And the best part is when stuff is cooked and ready coming off the fire, you can have a sample of it. Yeah, we got to try the biscuits today. And they were very tasty. Hardwood Pines offers a lot of different opportunities for different types of recreation. And among those is hiking. And you notice that there are a number of different types of trails or at least lengths of trails, right? Yes, there are five different distinct loops for hiking and in the winter cross-country skiing and a few of them also for biking. Uh, everything from two miles to seven miles. Three of the loops that you would get to are from the visitor center parking lot and the other two are a short way down the road near the park headquarters, um, which offer a little bit of different terrain, different scenery. So, uh, yep, five different options to choose from and varying lengths for whatever your desired length or um, athletic ability are. Here in Hartwick Pine State Park are two lakes, Bright and Glory. They're named after Karen Hartwick's dad's two oxen that they were used in the lumber industry. However, actually we learned that the oxen's names were Bright and Star, but there were already too many Star Lakes official in Michigan, so they convinced her to change it to Glory. 
bright and glory lakes are what are known as kettle lakes. These are created when the glaciers retreated and left huge ice blocks behind, which imprinted in the land and eventually melted, leaving behind these lakes. In this case, they're about 37 and 43 feet deep respectively. Both lakes are fairly small, but they are available for fishing. And as we have seen here today, quite a bit of kayaking is going on here. And it's just a nice little peaceful place to get out and do something different. One of the things that surprised me about Hartwick Pine State Park is considering how many things there are to see and do here between the logging museum and the hiking trails, there's not a very big campground, relatively speaking. There are only 100 campsites, although it looked like a nice campground. It did. And you know, it's Memorial Day weekend, and I think all but one or two of the sites that we saw were full. In fact, we couldn't even get into this campground because there wasn't anything available when we booked, or at least not consecutive, so we would have had to change campsites. Uh, but yeah, considering this is one of the largest state parks in the state, the campground is relatively small, uh, but I believe that just has to do with sort of the history of the camp in general, the state park, and you know the space and land that was donated because a lot of it is that old growth forest. So they probably didn't want to have to cut into it any more than they had to. Yeah, and they have upgraded this campground. So about half of them are electric, uh, but then the other half are electric water and sewer. Um, so you have full hookups at about half of the sites, but it seems like all of the sites still have only 20 and 30 amp power. There's no 50 amp power here. There also seems to be a pretty nice playscape, uh, one of the new modern ones, uh, as well as a volleyball pit and a basketball hoop, and I think the other few activities for the kids to do. I think this park is probably a great one for families. There's a lot of different things to do with the different levels of hiking trails, with the activities in the campground, the logging museum. It did seem like there were a lot of families that were camped at the campground, so that was good to see. The one thing we did notice too is the way the campground is laid out, it seemed to be all of the sites on the outer loop definitely had a little bit more privacy and some shade and trees, whereas the sites on the inner loop or so uh, were more kind of wide open with relatively little privacy, little shade. Uh, but we did see a lot of groups camping together. So those are really good sites for that where you can kind of all book, you know, two or three or four sites right together, set up all your picnic tables, your tents, your chairs, and families and friends can all just sort of camp together and hang out for the weekend. Hartwick Pines is a great state park. We definitely recommend this one and think that you can spend everything from a couple hours to a couple days to maybe even a full week here with so many of the things that there are to do. Well, and you had commented that we ran into people who were here from out of town who were camping, and we also ran into a number of locals who were here just visiting for the day or for some time. So it seems like a park that offers a lot to a lot of people uh, and, and gives you some different opportunities for different types of recreation, plus all the, the history in the museum part of it. Yeah, that's, that's sort of the trademark of this park is the logging museum. That's kind of what most people come for. But just the trails in general, or like the little lakes, I think there's just definitely a lot for everybody. Um, and if you can get a campsite, this is definitely a good place to spend a weekend with your family. Yeah, and you know, we're finding a lot of great places, but there are certain ones that I'm putting on a list to say, we need to come back and actually spend some more time. Mm -hmm. Hartwood Pines is gonna be one of those. And so we're gonna be back out here at some point and hopefully you get to visit it too. But no matter what park you decide to visit, pick one and get out there. Keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.